them saying, sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. Then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea and they went into the wilderness of Shur. And it's that understanding of wilderness that um, I want to, well, we're going to explore together. Um, you know, Moses wrote the five, first five books of the Bible, if you didn't know that, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers. The Pentateuch, Genesis stands out as a book which is where he wrote from the oral tradition in the first Hebrew alphabet that was ever um, designed and created. Um, and so the oral tradition was needed to be written about who was Abraham, who was Isaac, who were the patriarchs, how did God create the world, what were the stories handed down from Jewish family to Jewish family to Jewish family. They had been in Egypt 400 years, 400 years, and they had begun to forget who they were. They had forgotten their identity. They'd forgotten their roots, and Moses needed to write it down. And then the next books, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers, Moses is responsible for writing these. And they are his experience. You know, as we look at lessons from the wilderness, as they departed from the Red Sea and went into the wilderness, this rescue from Egypt is preceded by t the tenth plague. The tenth plague was terrible upon the Egyptians. They lost the firstborn son of every family in Egypt. And God gave them a memorial to follow, a way of stopping the angel of death letting that angel of death pass over the houses of the Israelites, where they had painted the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and the lintel of their houses. And just as Americans may celebrate the 4th of July or the uh, Thanksgiving, when the pilgrims got to Plymouth Rock, Jewish families for three and a half thousand years every year have celebrated the Passover. It was a deliverance. An amazing thing about the Passover is it's a picture of what Jesus and what God do, would do for the world. It's interesting, actually, in the Passover, um, the lamb was asked to be sacrificed in the afternoon before sundown, around three o'clock. The parallel with Jesus is just unbelievable and miraculous. And of course, this is a picture of Jesus' coming and his death on the cross. And then on the third day, when the Israelites went through dry land and crossed the Reed Sea, that is the day of the resurrection the third day. And so we have a picture of God's redemption of his people shown how it will be for all of us eventually when Christ comes. What a wonderful picture. But why look at the wilderness then? Because after the triumph, Miriam and the prophetesses and the women and the dancers and the singing and the tambourine, after that comes the wilderness. After the joy comes the pain. After the resurrection, the new life, comes the difficulty and the tension. And that's why we want to look at this series about the wilderness. You know, we have so many parallels with our situation now. And one of the most beautiful things is to see what the wilderness will do for us as we look at it. And as we look at this series together, these books have two sections. They have a narrative. If you read Exodus um, and Leviticus and Deuteronomy and Numbers, you'll see that they have a narrative section and they have a legislation, legislation section. This is very important to grasp this, that before God gives law, he redeems his people. 
They're not redeemed because they follow his law. And the picture is there in the Old Testament. They follow him after he redeems and rescues them. And they learn to live apart for him. After redemption, before redemption comes rescue. Redemption before righteousness. Liberation before legislation. It's the same picture. It's not earning our way into God's presence. God steps in when people ignore him in our slavery and he redeems them and then he asks them to learn from him. The pinnacle of the Old Testament is Exodus. All the prophets and the kings of Israel look back to this time when God, the creator of all, rescues his chosen people. Hosea, if you read the book of Hosea recently, Hosea talks about this analogy. God asks him to marry a prostitute, and the prostitute is unfaithful always to him, or constantly, and he goes and rescues her and goes and buys her back from the marketplace. This is a picture of Israel in the wilderness. Jeremiah says, Remember the devotion of your youth as you followed me into the wilderness. Isaiah says, reminds the people in an, another exodus, many millennia later in, in Babylon. He says, when Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. Of course, a prophecy there about Jesus as well from Isaiah. So here we have this, this book of Exodus that we're going to look at, and these stories in wilderness. Amazing stories, amazing miracles. There are more miracles in the book of Exodus and these four books than all of the other books put together in the Old Testament. Moses experienced the most intervening radical time of God intervening in history. We see that God does miracles like magic. A staff turns to a snake. Um, but others where God manipulates the natural events of the world around them to feed and to give and provide for his people. So quail come down. Um, for example, manna from heaven. And in the wilderness, the children of Israel, the people of Israel, discover their identity. It's in the pain of loss, in the unfamiliar, in not knowing what actually tomorrow will bring is where God is closest to the children of Israel. And many of us who've gone through personal wildernesses of our own will have the same testimony. When God has removed things from us, our health perhaps, we've lost someone close to us. It's at those times that God is closest to his people. The people of Israel knew God as El Shaddai, God Almighty. But to Moses, he revealed his personal name, a name that even the Jews will not speak. It's so personal and so precious, Yahweh. Meaning, I am who I am, or I will be who I will be. I was listening to David Pawson. He prayed, God, give me a word in English that will help me understand that name, Yahweh. And God revealed to him the word, always, always I will be with you. Always I will lead you. Always I will fight for you. Always I will provide for you. The wilderness is God's school. It's where he teaches us. We will learn three lessons about God. Rich has sung about it. The first lesson we will learn, he is with us. When we're weak, we need to understand and let God act on our behalf. He is with us. And one of the most blessed things in our lives as Christians is to know and experience tangibly that presence of God with us in our lives. He, second thing is he protects us. He will protect us. The children of Israel had to learn from experience that he will protect us. 
And the third thing is that he will provide God's providence. He will provide for us what we need at that time. And the children of Israel through the wilderness learn that about God. They also learn lessons about themselves. They learn that they are frail and they are weak. They learn, secondly, they might look back to Egypt. They might think that Egypt was better. They might think that the time before, when we had this, when we had that, when we had this, was better. And the memories of Egypt and the memories of our former lives often pull us back. As it's been said, you can take the people out of Egypt, but can you take Egypt out the people? And the wilderness is that expulsion of Egypt from the mindset of the people and from their culture. And the third thing that we learn about ourselves is how faithless we can be. That God can do miraculous things in our lives and then the very next day or the very next week or the very next month when something happens, it's disaster. And we grumble and we moan and we complain and we're fearful. But God has proved yet time and time again he is faithful and we are faithless. There are so many parables. I was speaking to a friend of mine recently. She's had a baby in lockdown, something that we call a coronial, apparently, according to Rich. Um, And she was crying when she spoke to me. I've not been able to see my mum. Imagine that. Your daughter gives birth to a baby. It's the first celebration of a child. And she's not seen her mum for the entire lockdown. She's handled it herself. I'm sure Zoom has helped, or FaceTime, or Skype, or whatever else. She hasn't had the presence of her parents as she became a parent herself. May not seem so big to us, but it was big to her. The comfort and support that we once had in this lockdown have been removed. The comfort of knowing what was gonna happen next. The support that we have from our friends and our families, we don't see them like we used to. People have lost jobs, they've lost their careers and their way of life. And some of my friends have been paralyzed by fear, fear of infection. Isolation has led to mounting stress. People have found this time difficult mentally and they've been challenged by that. And yet this is also can be an amazing time. As God removes those things from us that we depended on, those gods of Egypt in us, those ways of the culture in us, he can come close if we allow him. And his purposes will be fulfilled in our life through this time of wilderness. And some of you may be going through your own personal wilderness. A sudden pronouncement of sickness, of a grave kind. Dealing with loss of a family member and not being able to say goodbye in the ways that you, you thought you could in the past. This is a time of a wilderness, and God is speaking to us in this time. And we want to take the stories of the wilderness from the manna from heaven, from the quail, from the water from the rock, the bitter waters, the fighting with the Amalekites, how God provides time and time again. And we'll see that parallel. The second thing that we want to draw out from this series is that the Old Testament is redolent with Christ. He is in its pages. He is revealed through Genesis all the way through to Micah and to Malachi. His presence is there. It's not always so obvious to us. 
We love to read the New Testament and think, great, that's fantastic. There's lots of words of Jesus and Paul the Apostle tells us how to behave and what to be a church. What use is the Old Testament? I don't understand the Old Testament. And yet God is revealing his plan for the redemption of all mankind in the Old Testament. Moses himself is a type of Christ. He stands before God and the people. He pleads to God for the people. He speaks God's words back to the people. Moshi. Moshi himself, Moses, means drawn from the reeds. And yet he then points at the end of Deuteronomy and says, after me will come someone, a prophet greater. Listen to him. And it's a mystery, isn't it? Paul talked about it being a mystery, Romans 16, 25. Um, that now to him was to strengthen you according to my gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that kept secret for long ages. Paul talked about it being a mystery. The mystery hidden for ages and generations now revealed in Christ. So the second thing is that we see God revealing himself and we see Christ in action in all these stories of the wilderness. We will never truly enjoy the presence of God in our lives until we recognize he is all we have. When there are things in our lives that pull us away, that are also things we depend on, we will never experience the fullness of the presence and the journey with God until we recognize he is all we have and he is all there is. So, folks, we're going to enjoy hopefully studying and maybe you want to start reading the Exodus. You might want to remind yourselves of the stories of the wilderness. I was trying to do that last night with folks around the dinner table find out what stories they remember from the wilderness. What do you remember from the wilderness? And we're going to have a look at it together. But let's pray that this series is a chance for us to get close to him. Let him get close to us. To maybe expel Egypt out of us. And to know what following him and hearing his voice and not moving until we hear his voice to the promised land. Okay. Shall we sing as we close a song together? This will be a song if you stop.